of air. But the thing that, re that really was striking was 6.30 in the morning was that there was no reflection of the morning sun off this craft. All the rays were absorbed. And furthermore, there was no shadow under the craft. All the rays again were absorbed. And so I really was puzzled by this whole thing. And I uh, nudged Uri and pointed to the thing without saying a word. And he immediately saw what I saw. And then <clears throat> Nyla saw the same thing. So he wanted to know if the two officers in front could see the same thing. So Uri spoke to them in Hebrew and said, uh, what is that funny looking thing on the top of that ridge? And they looked up there and they said, oh, that's just some sagebrush. And we, that thing followed us for an hour and a half to our base, air base, where we took the military plane back to Tel Aviv. And they never saw it. And yet we saw it as clear as we saw each other. But that sort of thing we saw over and over again. And what I learned from that is that the beings and the UFOs can can command uh, or, or take over your perception and your uh, sensation of what you think you're experiencing. So I myself am never quite sure, as an honest observer and scientific observer, what I am looking at when I'm in the presence of a true UFO experience, because I know they can control your mind. Well, I have another observer here uh, that is a part of the regular crew here at KABC, and perhaps you know, you've heard of it. His name is Paul Harvey. Of course. And uh, this was from a broadcast of Paul's on September 23rd of this year. Let's yes, take I a listen to see what Paul had to say. UFO over Luxembourg this morning. Police saw it. Air traffic controllers and commuters saw it. Five or six bright green lights traveling at incredible speed at about 600 feet altitude. It did not show up on radar. So, um... Paul Harvey talks about the flying saucers. Yes, my uh, son, who lives in Holland, uh, was driving uh, back to uh, Holland from Munich, Germany, where he put me on a plane, and uh, he didn't see the craft himself, but he talked to many witnesses who saw the uh, craft over five uh, country area, and it made all the local papers in France, Germany, uh, Belgium, Luxembourg, and Holland. Well, I got on Paul Harvey News on ABC, so we can tip our hat to ABC yeah. for just a little bit. I'm talking to Dr. Andrea Pohanrich, along with Alan Vaughn here. We're talking about UFOs, scalar waves, ELF waves. We've even gotten to the crystal skull. And most anything you want to talk about, these other men can talk about it with you, if I may, to remind you of something that's very important. We touched upon it earlier with Dr. Pohanrich, and that is the million minutes for peace uh, worldwide movement that is sanctioned by the United Nations and almost every every nation um, in the country and every corporation are putting their stamp of approval upon it and their support. Mayor Bradley, the people here in Los Angeles, they'll be having a, a great gathering at the Hollywood Bowl on October 18th from 2 to 4 in the afternoon. It is free. The Hollywood Bowl people very graciously donated the bowl for this effort. Uh, on that Sunday afternoon, I'm going to be there. A lot of people will be there we would like for you to be there. And there has been a wonderful song written to go about this idea of pledging a moment, a minute, for peace. And we'll talk about the power of that. We touched upon it a little bit earlier, in a little bit. But I want you to listen to this and pledge, if you will, a minute for peace. That's how we got to the moon And then you keep it in mind All of the time And miracles really will happen I know it's true No matter what the odds are If you just believe You'll always find an answer Remember one minute 
A minute for peace, a minute of thoughts for peace, and let's find out how you can do that. Hello, who are we talking to here? To Joan Deary. Hello, Joan. Hello, Bill. How are you? Welcome back to Open Mind. We had a <laughs> marvelous time with Joan as we first talked about the Million Minutes for Peace uh, campaign that's going on all over the world. Somebody wants to get involved in this, Joan. What do they do? Well, there's several ways they can do it. Um, they can either call me here at uh, 850 1530, and I will send them a pledge form or take their pledge over the phone. Now, this is not a pledge for money. This is a no, pledge for a minute a pledge, of your time. Right. From 1 to 30 minutes between September 16th and October 16th. So we're getting close to October 16th, but it's not too late at all to pledge a minute of peace. Mm -hmm. And um, they can also, um, they have forms in the Bodhi Tree in Alexandria's in, and in the Phoenix Bookstore and at Fred Siegel's department store in Santa Monica are just some of the places that they can get them. Okay. Or they can write me at 8033 Sunset Boulevard, Suite 486, and I would be glad to send them to the platform. Tell us about what's happening at the Hollywood Bowl. Oh, this is very exciting. We're um, getting plans together to have um, an afternoon of music and celebration uh, to experience peace in, in the peaceful environment, of course, of the bowl. And we will have celebrity announcers, yourself included. Thank you. I don't know if it's a celebrity or not. <laughs> well, I think you are, Bill. You couldn't keep me away. Yes. We'll have a peace meditation and the International uh, Children's Choir will perform and they will um, get up and they will uh, accept the minutes from their, you know, that have been donated for their country. And so they will re represent their various countries. And there will be birds.